Introduction Hey kids, we have learned so many things about plants. Now we learn about respiration in plants. Respiration is a process of burning sugar to produce energy for growth, reproduction and other activities of life. If oxygen is present, then it is termed as aerobic respiration. If oxygen is not present, then it is termed as anaerobic respiration and the broken down product of glycolysis is used in fermentation. In lactic acid fermentation, lactic acid is formed whereas in alcoholic fermentation, ethanol is produced. So, throughout this module, we learn respiration in plants. Objectives at the end of this lesson, you will be able to discuss breathing of plants, explain glycolysis, know about fermentation, discuss aerobic respiration, explain tricarboxylic acid cycle, explain electron transport system ETS and oxidative phosphorylation, give an idea of respiratory balance sheet, describe Amphibolic pathway. Define respiratory quotient. Do plants breathe? There is no direct answer to this question. Respiration in plants is the use of oxygen and release of carbon dioxide. Plants also use carbon dioxide to make food and they also release oxygen in this process. This process is termed as photosynthesis. Plants do not have specialized organs for respiration, but they have stomata and lenticles. Respiration in plants is the utilization of oxygen, which combines with glucose and produces carbon dioxide, water and energy. The combustion of glucose gives carbon dioxide, water and energy. Glycolysis During glycolysis, a glucose molecule breaks into pyruvic acid and releases energy in the form of ATP. Steps in glycolysis Glucose is phosphorylated to glucose 6-phosphate by ATP in the presence of enzyme hexokinase. One ATP is utilized in this reaction. Glucose 6-phosphate changes into its isomer fructose 6-phosphate in the presence of enzyme Phosphoglucoisomerase. Fructose 6-phosphate is phosphorylated by ATP in the presence of an enzyme phosphofructokinase. Thus, fructose 1,6-diphosphate is formed and an upper molecule of ATP is consumed. Fructose 1,6-diphosphate now splits into two molecules of three carbon sugars dihydroxyacetone phosphate DHAP and 3 phosphoglycerol dehyde PGAL by the action of enzyme aldolase. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate DHAP is converted to PGAL by the action of enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. Now 3 phosphoglycerol dehyde converts to 1,3 biphosphoglycerate and also formed NADH plus H plus from NAD plus. 1,3-phosphoglycerate is converted into 3-phosphoglyceric acid and it also produces ATP from ADP. 3-phosphoglyceric acid is converted into 2-phosphoglycerate and then 2-phosphoglycerate is converted into phosphoenol pyruvate with the release of water and finally phosphoenol pyruvate is converted into pyruvic acid and also produces ATP from ADP. Fermentation Fermentation is the process of anaerobic breakdown of organic compounds by microorganisms. For example, yeast can turn to anaerobic respiration where there is no oxygen. In lactic acid fermentation, the pyruvic acid is converted into lactic acid by the enzyme lactic dehydrogenase. The reducing agent is NADH plus H plus, which is 
re-oxidize to NAD+. In alcoholic fermentation, the pyruvic acid releases one molecule of carbon dioxide to produce acetaldehyde. The acetaldehyde then re-oxidizes NADH plus H plus and then it gets reduced to ethanol. The enzymes pyruvic acid decarboxylase and alcohol dehydrogenase catalyze these reactions. Aerobic respiration. In aerobic respiration, the pyruvic acid is completely oxidized into carbon dioxide and water in the presence of oxygen. In aerobic conditions, pyruvic acid is oxidized through Krebs cycle, but before entering Krebs cycle, it enters into the mitochondrial matrix where it is decarboxylated and combines with coenzyme A to form acetyl coenzyme A. Tricarboxylic acid cycle The respiratory cycle which takes place in mitochondria in the presence of oxygen is known as Krebs cycle or tricarboxylic acid cycle. Krebs cycle starts with the condensation of acetyl-CoA with oxaloacetic acid to form citric acid in the presence of water. In the presence of aconitase, citric acid changes into cis-aconitic acid and releases one molecule of water. Cis-aconitic acid changes to isocitric acid in the presence of enzyme aconitase with the addition of water. Now, two hydrogen ions are removed from isocitric acid to form oxalosuccinic acid in the presence of enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase. During this, hydrogen ions are received by NAD+, forming NADH+, H+. Oxalosuccinic acid decarboxylated in the presence of enzyme carboxylase to form alpha-ketoglutaric acid and carbon dioxide is released. Alpha-ketoglutaric acid reacts with coenzyme A to form succinyl coenzyme A in the presence of alpha-ketoglutaric dehydrogenase enzyme. During the reaction, one molecule of carbon dioxide and a pair of hydrogen ions are released. Hydrogen ions are released by NAD+, to form NADH plus H plus. Now succinyl COA is converted to succinic acid in the presence of enzyme succinyl thiokinase. During the reaction, GTP is formed from GDP. Now succinic acid is dehydrogenated to form fumaric acid in the presence of enzyme succinic dehydrogenase and releases two hydrogen atoms which are received by FAD to form FADH2. Fumaric acid changes to malic acid by the action of enzyme fumarase. Malic acid is oxidized into oxaloacetic acid in the presence of NAD+, an enzyme malate dehydrogenase. The release pair of hydrogen atom forms NADH plus H plus from NAD plus. Electron transport system ETS and oxidative phosphorylation. During glycolysis and Krebs cycle, the glucose is oxidized and the coenzymes NAD plus and FAD are reduced to NADH plus H plus and FADH2. In the mitochondria, the electrons produced from NADH plus H plus are transferred to the electron carrier proteins and the produced protons are transferred across the membrane. The electrons picked up by the electron carrier proteins move from cytochrome to cytochrome in the electron transport chain and more protons are transferred across the membrane. Now the electrons are transferred by cytochrome C to cytochrome C oxidase complex and cytochrome C oxidase complex also transfers protons to the outside membrane.
Now the electrons are transferred to the oxygen which is also termed as terminal electron acceptor and water is formed as a product. The transfer of proton across the membrane of the mitochondria generates proton gradient and the protons that re-enter it to the mitochondrial matrix pass through a special channel protein called ATP synthase. The protons that re-enter synthesize ATP from ADP and phosphate. Formation of ATP through this mechanism is referred to as oxidative phosphorylation, the respiratory balance sheet. By using the respiratory balance sheet, we can calculate the net gain of ATP for each molecule of glucose oxidized. Assumptions for calculating the net gain of ATP. The pathway followed is in the order as given below. Glycolysis, TCA cycle, an electron transport system. NADH synthesized during glycolysis enters the mitochondria to get utilized in oxidative phosphorylation. Except glucose, no other compound enters in the pathway. Intermediates do not synthesize any other compound in the pathway. There can be a net gain of 36 ATPs during aerobic respiration of one molecule of glucose. Glucose plus 6 ATP plus 36 ADP plus 36 PI gives 6 CO2 plus 42 H2O plus 36 ATP. Amphibolic pathway. Generally, carbohydrates are used as substrates for respiration. Before entering into respiration, carbohydrates are first converted into glucose. Other substrate can also be respired. But they do not enter into the pathway at first step. For example, fats need to be broken down into glycerol and fatty acid first. Fatty acids need to be broken down into acetyl COA and then they can enter into the pathway. Similarly, glycerol is converted into PGAL and then they can enter into the pathway. In proteins, they first break down into amino acids and then into pyruvic acid and enter into the respiratory pathway. When organism needs to synthesize fatty acids, then acetyl COA is withdrawn from the pathway. Hence, it proves that the pathway is involved in both anabolic and catabolic processes and hence it is also known as an amphibolic pathway. Respiratory quotient. In aerobic respiration, oxygen is consumed and carbon dioxide is released out. The ratio of released carbon dioxide to the consumed oxygen in aerobic respiration is called respiratory quotient. RQ is equal to volume of CO2 given off upon volume of oxygen taken up. The value of the respiratory quotient depends upon the respiratory substrate. Calculation of respiratory quotient for carbohydrates C6H12O6 plus 6O2 gives 6CO2 plus 6H2O. Respiratory quotient can be calculated as 6CO2 by 6O2 is equal to 1. For fats 2C57H 110O6 plus 163O2 gives 114 CO2 plus 11 H2O. Respiratory quotient is equal to 114 CO2 by 163O2 is equal to 0.7. For protein, the value of respiratory quotient is 0.9. Did you know? There are more than 500 species of yeast. Yeast is responsible for the flavor and aroma compounds in beer. Yeasts belong to genus Saccharomyces, have much commercial importance because they are essential in making beer, wine, etc. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Respiration in plants is the utilization of oxygen 
which combines with glucose and produces carbon dioxide, water and energy. During glycolysis, a glucose molecule breaks into pyruvic acid and releases energy in the form of ATP. Fermentation is the process of anaerobic breakdown of organic compounds by microorganisms. In aerobic respiration, the pyruvic acid is completely oxidized into carbon dioxide and water in the presence of oxygen. Tricarboxylic acid cycle is respiratory cycle which takes place in mitochondria in the presence of oxygen and is also known as Krebs cycle. The formation of ATP through electron transport system is termed as oxidative phosphorylation. 36 ATPs are produced during aerobic respiration of one molecule of glucose. Respiratory pathway is amphibolic pathway. The ratio of released carbon dioxide to the consumed oxygen in aerobic respiration is called respiratory quotient.